Hey, good to see you. Hold on a second. No, that's good. <laughs> I'm John. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is the last day of February. It is the 28th. It is Tuesday. Now, like we do in every show, this is why you come. We're going to talk about hot OTC and penny stocks. I am out there every day looking for stocks to share with you that have potential. Now, I changed things up here a while back, and I've been doing my primary due diligence looking for these hot stocks by looking at the charts first. And I'm actually looking at blind charts. It's not like I choose a company and then go look at the chart. No, I get up a scan and then just start going through every chart. I don't even know who I'm looking at. Then when I find a nice chart that looks like it's ready to break out, I then learn what company it is and then go looking for what I call lingering news. This is news that came out, maybe a filing, maybe a month ago two months ago. And they're talking about an event that's going to happen in the very near future. So now, while the stock is calm and at a low price, it's a beautiful time to get in before that happens. We're sitting here when it does, we're going to get that launch. Well, that's the way we've been finding most of the stocks. But if there's a huge, big, hot piece of news that comes out, by golly, yeah, I'm going to follow that news. So one of the stocks we're looking at today was a last minute change up. We are going to be looking at a stock that's got some big news and you've probably heard of it before. You just haven't heard of it in a while. Now, all the stocks we're looking at are penny stocks. They're all under $5, regardless of what market they're on. And stocks under five bucks are on every single market. Now, when I do research on my stocks, particularly the OTC stocks, but honestly, I use it for all my stocks, I come here, the otcmarkets.com website. First off, it's the only site I know of on the entire internet that is updated for every OTC stock by FINRA and the SEC daily, through the day, as a matter of fact. Now, they do this with a lot of sites for the major exchanges but I don't know of any others for the OTC. And they do bring in a lot of information about the major exchanges. So this is a perfect place to start your research. This is all current information. And if you just happen not to find what you're looking for, stuff happens, then you've got the internet. But by starting here, I assure you, you'll not only get more research done, you'll enjoy doing it. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC finished today. Oh, blimey, that is not looking good. Come on, we need a bump. Nothing? All right, our dollar volume, I think we're pretty much even, about uh, 1.5. We're way below 2 billion. That's where we need to be. Share volume. Bloody hell. Sorry, folks, but man, we were at 6.5 yesterday, I think it was. We're at 3.7 today. We need to be at 10 billion. That'll get us out of bed. We're not even out of bed right now. I don't even think we're out of our coma. And our trades stifled. Virtually the whole month, under 250,000 trades, which is where we were stuck as our floor. 250 to 300 for at least six months. Now we can't even get back to it. It is looking dark, folks. E cats. All right, let's change the mood and the attitude by looking at the stocks I found. They have more hope than this does. Come on, I'm ready for you. First stock we're taking a look at comes off the major exchange. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker AKLI, Akili Inc. Now, this is a very unique company. They are creating a new sector. They deal with digital medicine. You heard me right, digital medicine. They've actually got an FDA-approved digital medicine that is being prescribed, that has to be bought and paid for, and is working for kids with ADHD. Now, they've had a lot of filings come out here recently, and Many of them could be used as catalysts. And they've got some good, strong, lingering news that came out about a month ago. So AKLI, she finished the day at $1.65 with almost 2.5% gains. Now, we don't have a description here, but if they've got news, you can normally find a description in there. They tell us that AKLI is pioneering the development of cognitive treatments through game-changing technologies. No pun intended there. You'll see what I mean. Our approach of leveraging technologies designed to directly target the brain establishes a new category of medicine, digital medicine. Medicine that is validated through clinical trials just like a drug or medical devices, but experienced like entertainment. 
ActLive platform is powered by proprietary therapeutic engines designed to target cognitive impairment at its source in the brain, informed by decades of research and validated through rigorous clinical programs. Driven by ActLive's belief that effective medicine can also be fun and engaging, ActLive's products are delivered through captivating action video game experiences. How about that? So what was the relative volume on this company today? What? Um, I'm gobsmacked. I don't know what to say. What a huge drop from 85,000 to 11,000. I don't see any bad news. It's just seriously under the radar. Wow. Share structure for AKLI. All right, they don't give us anything here, but the outstanding 77 million shares. So we jump on over to Google. Now, all I'm looking for is the numbers that agree. There's going to be lots of numbers over here. Lots of uh, sites don't update. So I'm looking for numbers that agree. And we've got a few here. 32 million, 32 million. Here's a 36. There's a 25. Still in the ballpark. Ooh, 57. What's that? 77,000. That's what that K means. 77,000. I doubt that. 62 million. All right. Uh, so what are we to choose? Well, it looks to me... If I didn't come over here and show you, I would just say, well, I got three in the 30s. So I'm presuming it is in the low 30s. That's going to be my best guess. We are looking at about 50% of the outstanding shares is in the float. So roughly 30 to 35 million. Best guess. Looking at the financials here. All right, we got nothing annually. There is no money coming in at all. And they got $82,000 uh, for one quarter, September's quarter of 2022. We know that's thousands and not just $82 because we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on this chart. Now, I did go jumping into the most recent financial and that's it. It is September's. Everybody right now is due for financials. There's going to be a lot of them coming out and this one is due. And that is what they did, 82. And looking at their balance sheet, if I remember correctly, didn't look bad at all. Uh, looking at their total assets, using those three zeros again, we got $165 million in assets. That's pretty chunky. And liabilities, about one-fourth, $41 million. So they are headstrong in assets. No doubt about that. Yeah, I know what I said. <laughs> Disclosures. All right. I did tell you they had a bunch of disclosures come out here recently. We've got one, two, three, four, five, 13 Gs. These are good news. These are new partners they've just taken on. New big investors that buy enough shares that they qualify for ownership in the stock. So they are partners now. And I opened these up and counted because you can have more than one in a filing. There are nine new partners that have just come into this company. And then the 8Ks here really have nothing to do with us. It has to do with the news coming out and something else that they were doing. So let's go take a look at that news. All right, our news starts here at uh, the end of 2022 in December. They replaced their chief medical officer. Then on January 5th, we had a piece of news, and this is the one I want to share with you. Past that, they went to a health conference in January, another one in February, and now they've just announced that they are going to be revealing their Q4 and their annual financial results March 7th. I knew it was close. That's only a week away. So let's jump into this news from January 5th. They tell us here that pivotal trials of Endeavor RX in adolescents with ADHD shows robust improvements in attention and broader clinical outcomes. Attention improvements were nearly three times as large as those in the pivotal trials that served as the basis for Endeavor RX's FDA authorization. The study data will be used to file for Endeavor RX's label expansion with FDA in 2023. Down here in the news, they inform us that ActLi is a leading digital medicine company, right? They announced top line results of their STARS ADHD adolescent label expansion study. The results of this study extend the already substantial evidence base to support the efficacy of Endeavor RX for improving attentional functioning in patients with ADHD. And most importantly, show the ability of this safe treatment to help teenagers who've been significantly impacted by the current medical health crisis. 
Endeavor RX is the first and only FDA authorized treatment delivered through a video game experience. That's first mover advantage, not just with a new drug, but in a new sector. Endeavor RX is available by prescription only. It is not intended to be used as a standalone therapeutic and is not a substitution for child's medication. The most common side effect observed in children in Endeavor RX's clinical trials was a feeling of frustration, as the game can be quite challenging at times. No serious adverse events were associated with its use. Endeavor RX is recommended to be used for approximately 25 minutes a day, five days a week, over initially a four week period. They say you can see results in just four weeks after playing this game, or as recommended by your child's health care provider. So that's what you got going on here, folks. A new type of medicine to help a big problem in our country. It seems a lot of kids are tagged with ADHD. So this is something new, fresh, hot. They're not making a lot of money right now, but you got a lot of people investing in this company right now. We just had nine new investors, nine new partners. They bought so much, they now own a portion of this company. I think it's big news. Though they haven't given us any dates here, they don't show us any money, we just don't see any of that, we do see some light here, and I think it's worth considering. Let's go take a look at that chart. <laughs> I know, I know. You're looking at that chart going. I promise it's not as bad as it looks. This is ticker AKLI, six month, four hour chart. And we're going to be doing all of our charting on Think or Swim, my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So six months ago, we had a terrific high bubble, $53.21. Right now, we're at $1.65, and at the end of December, she was half of that. She was only $0.86. Cents. Now, before we look at this flat line, I want you to look at our PPO. This is our percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like the MACD, except it works with a percentage of the price. The MACD works with the full price. Pretty much, you read them the same, but they do act a little bit differently. As you can see, our PPO has been climbing for months, and she has just had a crossover and looks like she's coming back up right now. Now, let's take a look at this flat line. Zoom in on that, and as you can see, it's not flat. There's a lot going on there. It just looked flat compared to that huge drop we had. So she has been falling for a very long time. She's deep under her 200, underneath her 50, hit that low bubble, and changed her game. The downtrend is over. The uptrend has begun. It's jumped up onto her 50-day SMA, crossed the 200, maybe got a little bit too high right here, came back down to her 200, bounced on her 200, and it looks like she's going to try to bounce again. Now, what do our technicals show at this point? I see some recovery here. Our PPO. You can see it is just now starting to curve back up to get on top of that pink. And my ADX, this is my trend continuation. I want a straight line. As long as the line does not change direction, your trend doesn't change. Well, that's a little line because we've only had a little bit of uptrend. Well, these two are spreading apart. When you see a blue PPO and your red ADX separating, when you got that spread, Guaranteed, 100%, it is going up. So right now, things are looking good. Look at our crossover on our MACD, imminent, looking good. The only thing weak here is our RSI. It is down there at 45 right now. Well, the volume's weak too. <laughs> the volume's real weak today. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Oh, we had a hellacious climb here. Went from $1.44 over a 10-day spread, 10 days of climbing, hit $2.20, and then abruptly fell. Crashed through her 50-day SMA, bounced off of her 200, has been bouncing on it over and over again, and then lost her footing here. Boy, came down deep, straight across, and is rolling back up. She's sitting on top of her 9-day SMA, right up underneath that 50. And it looks like the 50 is trying to curve around to get back up on top of that 200. And look, look at our PPO and our ADX. We got that spread, right? So that means the price is still pushing up right now. Our MACD is just now crossing the signal line and is on the right side of the other line. And our RSI is now climbing. It is up to 53. The uh, volume hasn't changed. <laughs> five day, five minute. 
All right, big drop here from $1.85 down to $1.46. Bounced before the end of the day, has been going sideways, and right now she's making a move. Look, we got a huge bar here at the very beginning of the day. Not only did it break to 200, but it shot down and it touched that 50. A high goodbye, a kiss for luck, I'm on my way. Boom, and she has now put herself right on top of the 200. That is a perfect setup right now. Now I can't say we have a hot fire catalyst, but we do have some strong catalysts that could get this thing moving. The chart is set up. It only needs a little bit of push. AKLI looks good to me. I would keep my eye on it. Next stock we're taking a look at is ticker AMMPF, Ampower Core. Now the chart looks pretty good, but it's not what I would call a breakout chart. It's more of a continuation chart. She hasn't got any filings to really consider, but she does have some huge news. So AMMPF finished the day at just about 25 cents and almost 3% down. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials to be here. That just makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. I'm always harassing you about these. If you're going to get into a penny stock on the OTC for a long hold, make sure you see these. There's a lot of important information being represented by these green ticks that's validated behind the scenes. The more validated information you got, the better. Now, if you're just playing this for a quick turnaround, don't you worry about that. None at all. They do have independent directors. No big surprise. Probably used them when they jumped from the pink up to the QB. You have to have independent directors if you're going to uplist. And if they want to go any higher, they're going to need them then too. So what does AMMPF do? Well, they tell us here the company is a mineral exploration company. But they did some restructuring, jumping into one of their financials. They tell us that the company reorganized its business and assets into two distinct corporate divisions, Ampower Lithium and Mineral Resources and Ampower Ammonia and Alternative Energy. So what is the relative volume around this company today? Well, it's an improvement, jumping from 158,000 to 210,000 shares a day. No, it's nothing to brag about. It's not real huge, but at least it's going the right direction. Share structure for the company. Got 151 million outstanding. Too many numbers to choose from from the float, so I did a Google search. Actually found a number that agreed a few times, 53 million. Now, do I know for a fact it's 53 million? No, I don't. But they don't give us facts. We have to always extrapolate it. So I'm presuming. You want facts? I know it's under 151 million. But my hope is, is that it's 53 million. Financials for the company, they suck. <laughs> they don't have any. There's nothing annually. There's nothing quarterly. Now, of course, this caught my attention because it looks like they were in business. So I did some digging around. It kind of looks like they took time off voluntarily. I mean, they're doing things behind the scenes, but they're not doing anything to make revenues. They're not actually doing business. But this news we're going to take a look at, things are changing. And some of this news looks like it could seriously bring in some good revenues. Looking at their disclosures, we're not going to see anything because it's bare. They don't have anything over here. So let's jump on into that news. I have found four pieces of news I consider relevant. They go from January 9th to February 9th. We got 30 days of news here. We're just going to go through them one after the other. We're only looking at the bulleted information I think is important. This first one came out January 9th. The company made an acquisition and got just a smidge over 50% of it. 50.05% of Progressus Clean Technologies. The company issued 50 million shares for the company at 30 cents a piece, Canadian cents. Right now we're at 24 cents to Canadian. That's pretty much even right there. Pretty close. In connection with this acquisition, the vendors agreed to provide to the company an aggregate loan of a half a million dollars. So they're getting money on top of this deal. But here's where it gets real interesting. As a result of the acquisition, Aberdeen International Inc., first time they mention these people, has become an insider, a control person of the company. 
Aberdeen acquired ownership and direction or control of over 40 million company shares, representing approximately 27.35% of the issued and outstanding company shares. Prior to the completion of the acquisition, Aberdeen didn't have any holdings in the company. Aberdeen has acquired the company shares for investment purposes and may, in the future, take such actions in respect of their respective holdings in the company, as they may deem appropriate at that time. So right now, he's just sitting back. He's trusting the company's going to grow. He's using it as an investment, but he is the boss. He has the last say-so. If all of a sudden he has an idea and wants to do something different, he could do it. He's in charge. The next piece of news comes out January 10th. Ampower Corps has been named as one of the private sector partners in the Port of Corpus Christi Authorities Horizons Clean Hydrogen Hub. Whew, what a big name. Thank God for abbreviations, HCH2. The Port of Corpus Christi's authority, HCH2, has been encouraged to submit a full hub application by the U.S. Department of Energy Office of Clean Energy Demonstration. Ampower's role as a hub team member would be to build and operate the facilities to manufacture green hydrogen and green ammonia. That is great. Not only are they going to build it, but they're going to operate it too in a perfect place in a huge port, the Port of Corpus Christi, an industrial area. February 6th, we got new news. They have a new division. They put in a new vice president for this new division, IAMM. You know what IAMM stands for? It's pretty ingenious. Independent Ammonia Making Machine. Kind of cute, huh? And the last piece of news is powerful. Ampower signs memorandum of understanding with the Port of Corpus Christi to provide green hydrogen energy solutions. First they were considered, now they're picked. Now we're not going to go through any information here. I'm going to let you do some due diligence. But you see where we're heading now. They're going to build the facility and they're going to operate it. Things are going to start to change now. That's why we're looking at this stock. Let's go take a look at that chart. What a wild thing. This is ticker AMMPF, six month, four hour chart, and it is everywhere. Our low bubble on this side of the chart is at 15 cents. Our high bubble here in September of 34. And she has been high and low around this 200 day SMA. Just hasn't found a place to settle until right here. She started calming down and then she decided to jump. She got on top of her 50 and pushed off and she's sitting on her nine day SMA right now, looking charged. Everything looks strong on the technicals. Everything is pushing up except our RSI because of that little pullback at the back half of the day. Our 20 day, one hour view. Pretty calm, right? She's sitting right here on this support line I drew, just going sideways. And then she broke away here, hit her head on the 200, took another stab at the 200, succeeded, got over it, hit a high here, and she is pulling back and falling right now. Technical say she is still falling, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it come down to the 200-day SMA. But See what we got going on right here? This 50 day crossing the 200, that is a very strong power sign. So we're gonna be watching that. Five day, five minute. All right, she was sitting smack dab on her 200 day SMA here at about 23 cents, took off on her nine day, came down, tagged the 200 day with that hello, goodbye, kiss on the cheek, I'm leaving, and rushed up here. Hit this high and she is falling right now. And again, the technicals say she's still gonna fall. And I could see her coming down to the 200, no problem, just like this, hitting it and then starting to ride again. But remember folks, we're not looking at AMMPF for a run tomorrow or a run next week. This is a business developing now. They've got something huge here at this port with this hydrogen hub. And it's gonna take time Time to build but as news comes out I expect things to get excited with this chart so I would be watching AMMPF put it in your watch list watch for the volume to come in she's not at a bad price right now this last stock we're taking a look at was a last minute change for me she had some huge news come out today that I just could not overlook the chart uh, but it does look like it isn't a place to break out it's not the best chart but this news is big this is Phil, ticker P-H-I-L. 
Phi Group Incorporated. Now, maybe you remember hearing about this company, but you can't remember when or why. Well, back in 2019, when they were talking about the Asian Diamond Exchange, they were huge. They were running good. And that was what they were doing in Vietnam. They were putting up this Asia Diamond Exchange where they were going to sell rough cut diamonds. Well, they're basically a bank that brings in investment money. Well, Vietnam right now, wants to upgrade the entire country. They want like $22 billion by 2040 to do everything they want to do. Well, this company is working on one city in the free trade zone where they're allowed to bring in money from abroad, from investors not in Vietnam. And they're going to build everything here. They're going to build this Asia Diamond Exchange. They're going to build a gym. They're going to build the roads. They're going to build the water treatment systems. They're going to build everything here. And the news that came out today is exactly exactly what they needed to hear. So Phil, she finished today at a prime price, double zero one one. Folks, this is my favorite price to buy in on a sub penny stock, double zero one. There's very little motion needed. You don't have to move very far to get a double zero one to double zero two. And as soon as you do, you've got 100% gains. Hit three, you've got 200% gains and on and on. So when you buy on the one, by the time you hit 10, or a penny, you're at 10 times your money. Why buy at a nickel and only have 100% gains at a penny when you can buy now and have 1,000% gains? God, I love this price. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but I do not see a verified profile. And look at this, independent directors. You know what they're for uplisting. Well, she's on the pink, so she hasn't uplisted from anywhere yet. So they've obviously got plans. You don't need independent directors for darn near anything else but uplisting. So why put them on the payroll unless you have plans? All right. I've already told you what the company does. What was the relative volume around the company today? Aha. Uh -huh. I think word is out what's going on here. It jumped from 81 million to 129 million. Not exactly under anybody's radar, is it? Share structure. Well, I can tell you this much. I did not go out and look it up because I don't think any number I found was going to make me happy. They say it is about 32 billion in the float. Now, back in 2018, it was only 188 million. What happened? Now, I know that's pretty close to the truth because they got 1.6 billion in restricted shares. That is for the insiders. Just subtract that from the outstanding and that's about what we're left with. So there's a ton of shares. I don't really like it for a long hold, but I like it for a surge and a run. Financials for the company. Well, as I said, they've been asleep for a couple years. They did $30,000 at the end of June 2022. That's the end of their fiscal year. Remember these three zeros. It's not $30. It's not that bad. Quarterly, ah, like I said, they've been asleep. There's not a whole lot going on right now, but the news is going to change everything. Disclosures. Well, this is actually where we can do it. They do have a news press out, but I've already taken time to share this and I've got all the information highlighted just perfectly. It is this 8K right here that came out yesterday. Let's take a look at this. I put this up on Twitter. PHIL Phi Group, huge private investment, a half a billion dollars to complete the entire Saigon Technology Park in Vietnam. On February 21st, 2023, Phylex Global Group signed an investment commitment agreement with Saigon Silicon City Joint Stock Company for a half a billion dollars to complete the company's entire development and investment program. All of it. And if they need more money, it says right here, and subsequent additional capital as needed. So they've got all the money they need to finish their project. According to the investment commitment agreement, within 30 days of the signing of this agreement, the investors will provide or cause to be provided the first $50 million installment. And here we go. They're off and running, folks. So they got a half a billion dollars to work on their city and they got $50 million of it already. And if they need more, they've been promised to get it. It doesn't get any better than that. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what we can get out of it. 
looking at Phil, ticker PHIL, six month, four hour chart. See a huge M here, you know, it's like a mirror image. We had a high bubble back here in August of 0026, hit the floor triple zero one here in January and right now she seems to be calm and doing a whole heck of a lot of nothing she's been going sideways for about five days look at how flat our 50-day SMA is she's even under the nine-day SMA the volume has been coming in but it is diminishing right now I would not be surprised to see that kick up our technicals are pretty planted everything is as flat as the bars are right now Looking at our 20-day, a one-hour view. Had a huge jump here out of nowhere, you know, going flat and jump from 0008 up to 002. You're looking at 250% gains right there. Then came crashing down, went underneath her 200-day SMA, underneath her 50-day SMA. But look, look what we got set up right here. That 50-day SMA is just about to go over that 200-day SMA. That is a power sign. And our price is on top of the nine, right underneath that 50. It's got its footing. It could jump and get up there. And our technicals say she's got power. We've got a crossover on our PP just about ready to happen our ADX is showing that the trend is continuing it looks like it's a little green right now we've got our nine day SMA pointing up had a crossover on our MACD the green bars are accumulating the only thing that's a little weak is our RSI at 52 but she's just going sideways looking at our five day five minute Picket fence, a barcode. She's bouncing here from uh, 001 to 0011. Just across the board. And right now, another setup. We have the 50 day just crossed the 200 day SMA, and our price is right there at the nine day SMA. And our technicals, even though the chart doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot, you can see the pressure building up here. It is getting hotter and hotter. So even though the kernels aren't moving in the pot yet, I expect them to pop any moment. So I'd be watching. P-H-I-L, this big news is going to do something. I guarantee it, folks. She has been asleep for a while, and this is a beautiful buy-in price. I would at least get something here before you see what she does. P-H-I-L, I'm loving hot news, too. I sure hope you're doing your due diligence, too. Whether you're looking at hot news, or you're going through your filings, or you're looking at charts, any one of those can give you a catalyst to get a stock moving. But it helps if you've got a chart that's set up and you've got news to push it. Due diligence can be a lot of fun. It's like a puzzle, putting all these pieces together. You find a warm chart and you're going, oh, please, please, please be some lingering news. Remember, folks, DD isn't work. It really is fun because it's going to help you make money. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.